subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 7th of February. Several states in India reopen schools as coronavirus cases decline. Foreign ministers of Sri Lanka, India hold talks on energy security and fishermen issue. An Indian flag flies at half mast in honor of singer Lata Mangeshkar. And now for all the details, schools and colleges reopened for physical classes on Monday in several states across India as authorities have eased down restrictions amid a decline in coronavirus cases. India's single-day infections dropped below 100,000 on Monday as it logged around 83,800 cases in the past 24 hours. Schools and colleges were open for offline classes in several states across India on Monday as authorities have started easing down restrictions amid a decline in coronavirus cases. In Lucknow and capital New Delhi, the classes resumed for standard 9 to 12, while Ahmedabad began classes for standard 1 to 9 while adhering to COVID-19 protocols. A spike in coronavirus infections due to the new Omicron variant had prompted the closures early in January. The temperatures of the students were checked and hand sanitized as they arrived wearing masks at schools. India's single-day infections dropped below 100,000 for the first time in 32 days on Monday as it locked around 83,800 fresh cases, taking the active cases to 1.10 million. ये कोरोना के लिए कोरोना के कारण स्कूल बंद हो रही है फिर शुरू हो रही है बार बार ऐसा हो रहा है इसलिए हमें पढ़ाई में प्रॉब्लम्स हो रही है और यहां स्कूल में हमें कोरोना ना हो इसलिए सारे प्रिकॉशंस लिए जा रहे हैं हेल्थ एक्सपर्ट्स हैव सेड ओनली 5 टू 10% ऑफ द इंफेक्टेड हैव सॉट हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन आफ्टर द अराइवल ऑफ द ओमिक्रॉन वेरिएंट इन इंडिया India's health minister Mansukh Mandavia on Monday said the country has so far administered over 1.7 billion COVID-19 vaccination doses, including booster shots to its eligible population aged above 15 years. And Sri Lanka's foreign minister G.L. Perez on Monday held talks with his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar in New Delhi to boost bilateral cooperation. The two leaders discussed economic and investment initiatives that will strengthen Sri Lanka. The talks also focused on additional steps to enhance Sri Lanka's energy security and recognized the importance of tourism and people-to-people -people linkages. They also discussed the fishermen issue and agreed that bilateral mechanisms should meet early. Jay Shankar informed in a series of tweets. The meeting came days after India extended a $500 million fuel credit line and a $400 million currency swap facility to the island nation. Sri Lanka is struggling with its worst financial crisis in years, with reserves hitting $3.1 billion US dollars last December. The country has to repay about $4 billion in debt repayments this year. And China pledged to closer cooperation with Pakistan under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor as Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and Chinese President Xi Jinping met in Beijing on Sunday to discuss strategic and economic relations. Khan's visit came as Pakistan grapples with record high inflation and foreign inflows have become critical to its economy. Pakistan and China on Sunday agreed to further enhance strategic and economic relations and fast-track the second phase of CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project, during talks between Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing on Sunday. The two leaders discussed a host of issues including the situation in Afghanistan, the slow pace of the CPEC, and increasing concerns of Beijing over recurring attacks on Chinese personnel working in its various projects in Pakistan. Meanwhile, Beijing opposed to any unilateral actions as it called for resolving the Kashmir issue with India peacefully, a joint statement said. 
Prime Minister Khan also met his counterpart Li Keqiang on Saturday, who said he would encourage Chinese business enterprises to invest in Pakistan as the two sides signed a host of agreements in areas including industry, investment and infrastructure, reports suggest. Khan's four-day visit to China came as Pakistan grapples with record-high inflation and foreign inflows have become critical to its economy, given that its external account deficit has widened. It also underlined Islamabad's financial dependence on China, as the Western powers have been ignoring Pakistan for quite some time. And moving on, prolonged power cuts and over that hefty electricity bills have continued to trigger unrest among the people of Gilgit, Baltistan. Locals say they are having a distressing time, but authorities are not doing anything to solve the issue, despite the region having abundant water resources to generate sufficient electricity. There is anger and loathing among residents of illegally occupied Gilgit Baldistan territory as frequent power outages continue to disrupt their lives and over that they have to pay hefty electricity bills. Locals said they are having a distressing time and authorities are not doing much to solve the issue despite the region having abundant water resources to generate sufficient hydroelectricity. Coordinator of the Chief Minister of Gilgit Baldistan said, despite him being part of the ruling government, he was helpless and claimed the people of his constituency had to suffer this injustice. <laughs> तीन पावर हाउस है चौथा पावर हाउस भी 2 मेगावाट मेरे ख्याल में इस साल मुकम्मल होने के उसके बावजूद भी अगर हम लोड शेडिंग में रहते मेरे ख्याल में ये हमारे लिए भी लम्हा फिक्रिया है और मुतलका जो वाटर एंड पावर डिपार्टमेंट के जो लोग बैठे उनके लिए भी लम्हा फिक्रिया है आज के बाद मुझे नहीं कहना चाहिए मैं हुकूमत के अंदर हूं किसी तरीके से भी जो है हमें ये नाइंसाफी कबूल नहीं होगी Locals have time and again held protests over the issue and accused Pakistan of melting out a stepmotherly treatment to the illegally occupied region, failing to develop the infrastructure and leaving them high and dry. Basant Panchmi is one of the most important festivals in Nepal which is celebrated with great fervor. The day is dedicated to Goddess Saraswati, the Hindu deity of learning and music. Students in capital Kathmandu celebrated the occasion over the weekend by visiting the Saraswati temple in the Swayambhunath Stupa and prayed for success in their studies. Students celebrated Basant Panchmi as they climbed up the temple located on the hilltop of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Swayambhunath in Nepal's Kathmandu, over the weekend and prayed to Goddess Saraswati and wrote their name on the wall. The walls and edges of the temple are filled with names and scribbles in places where anyone can reach, some guided by parents while some writing on their own. The day of Basant Panchmi in Nepal is considered an auspicious day to mark a fresh start to know the alphabet. Basant Panchmi, which is also popular among students as Saraswati Puja, falls on Shukla Panchmi of Nepali month which marks the beginning of spring season. It follows the religious belief that if students worship Saraswati, they will get success in their studies. education <laughs> Many of their parents brought their sons and daughters to the temple to introduce them to alphabets by writing on the walls and edges of the temple, marking it as their start into the academic field. In comparison to earlier years, the celebration of Saraswati Puja this year was largely limited due to COVID-19 pandemic. 
as most schools in Kathmandu Valley chose not to organize any formal events to celebrate. And popularly known as the nest man of India, Rakesh Khatri, a bird lover, has created more than 250,000 nests for his feathered friends across the country. Since the pandemic hit, he has been conducting workshops and webinars mostly for children, teaching and encouraging them to build bird houses. Rakesh Khatri, popularly known as the Nest Man of India, has revolutionized the world of housing of four birds by creating more than 250,000 nests for his feathered friends. A bird lover since childhood, when Khatri moved to a close-up urban concrete jungle, he started missing the birds, so he built some bird houses with discarded coconut shells. Khatri soon had birds in his residential society of concrete buildings with no open space. Since then, there was no looking back for him as he went on to conduct many workshops and webinars, mostly for children, teaching and encouraging them on how to build bird houses and has contributed to the making of thousands of bird houses in the country. थोड़ी देर के बाद वो उड़ गया थोड़ी देर बाद वो अपनी फीमेल के साथ आया और उनके मुंह में तिनके थे उन्होंने उसके अंदर तिनके रखने शुरू कर दिए ये बड़ा मस्मराइज और बड़ा ही सम्मोहित करने वाला दृश्य था कि आपने एक चीज बनाई और उसके ऊपर उस चिड़िया ने आके अपना घर बनाया लगा ये सक्सेस हो गया 2 मिनट के अंदर वो 19 के 19 घोंसले जो लोग थे पड़ोस के जो हंसी उड़ाते थे वो सब ले और सबने लगा दिए और 3 दिन बाद जब उस घर में गए तो हर घर के बाहर जहां घोंसले लगे थे उसमें वो चिड़िया थी तो ये एक सबसे बड़ा टर्निंग पॉइंट था Khatri has also been featured in the Limca Book of Records and has received the National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology and also has a chapter dedicated to him in a fourth standard textbook in schools. And the Indian flag flew at half mast at government buildings on Monday as the nation observed two days of mourning over the demise of legendary singer Lata Mangeshkar at the age of 92. Tributes have continued to pour in as fans remember the country's very own Nightingale's melodious voice who refined music and melody for generations of Indians. The Indian flag flew at half-mast on Monday at all government buildings in the national capital New Delhi in honour of legendary singer Lata Mangeshkar, who died at the age of 92. India's very own Nightingale Mangeshkar passed away on Sunday morning due to multi-organ failure at Mumbai's Breach Candy Hospital, where she had been admitted with COVID-19 for nearly a month. Fans of the singer mourned her death and paid tributes to her as they remembered her melodious voice. State governments including in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Northeastern Sikkim announced two days of mourning over her demise. The iconic singer's cremation on Sunday was attended by several celebrities and politicians including Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Her nephew Adinath Mangeshkar was seen bringing the Asti Kalash or urn of ashes from the cremation spot on Monday, while fans continue to pay tributes at the site. मेरे भारत को युगों युगों तक लता जी इसलिए प्रेरित करती रहेंगी अपने सत्य से अपने कृत्य से कि जब देशभक्ति की बात आएगी तब लता जी का गाना प्रेरित करेगा जब ईश्वरीय भक्ति की बात आएगी तब लता जी का गाना प्रेरित करेगा जब तक मानव जाति जीवित रहेगी इस जगत में इस चराचर जगत में जब तक मनुष्य को प्रेम करना ये अनुभूति जीवित रहेगी तब तक लता जी प्रेरित करती रहेंगी तो लता जी हमारे स्वप्न में हमारे हकीकत में हमारे कृत्यों में हमारे सत्यों में सदैव जीवित रहेंगी बोर्न इन 1929 इन प्री इंडिपेंडेंस इंडिया लता मंगेशकर बिगैन सिंगिंग इन हर टीन्स एंड इन अ करियर स्पैनिंग 73 इयर्स she sang at least 15,000 songs in 36 languages. She enthralled music-mad Indians with her lilting voice and sheer range, and some of her songs are used as prayers in temples, shrines and schools. She received India's highest civilian honour, the Bharat Ratna, in 2001, and in 2009 was awarded Legion of Honour by France. India's Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, in his obituary reference in the Parliament on Monday, said that the death of the singing legend has marked the end of an era in the music industry. 
her doctor informed she had a smile on her face even in her final movement well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at @asianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we'll see you same time tomorrow Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India